Last year, we thought 2024 was going to be a job market hell, but it turns out that not only we have even more hiring freeze, we also found ourselves even deeper into the subscription nightmare that is AI services. Because for just 20 bucks a month, you would get your own green junior that is good at coding but bumbles at the same time and can write you some good emails that could have been only 10 words. Some may say that it's money well spent, but some may say that you're not min maxing enough. Because if I could run free chatbots near equivalent to ChatGPT myself, why would I pay 20 bucks a month for a service just to tell me I can only use it again at 8pm? So if you ever want to know how to run AI chatbots and LM models locally, this video is the perfect gateway for you. To get started, picking the right user interface for yourself is very important as it will be catering to your needs depending on how deep you are in the rabbit hole. First, we have Text Generation Web UI and it usually goes by the name Uba Booga. It offers three modes. Deep Default, which is basic input output, chat, which is like a dialogue format, and notebook, which is pretty much like text completion. It is the current most popular UI and offers most of the basic stuff you need. Second, we have Silly Tarvern, which focuses more on the front end experience of using AI chatbot like chatting, role playing, and even more visual novel like presentation. But it's just generally a really nice looking front end for using LLMs. And since it's only a front end, it will need a back end like Ubabuga to run the AI models. But if you just want some straightforward exe file, then there is LM Studio, which has lots of great native functions like Hugging Face Model Browser, which makes finding models much more easier. Other than that, it has some much nicer quality of life info that would tell you if you can run a model or not. It's definitely a good alternative if you don't like the Gradio type of interface. You can hop between models swiftly and you can use it as an API for other apps too. Lastly, we have Axolotl and it is a command line interface that offers the best support for fine-tuning AI models. So if you do get deep into fine-tuning, this is definitely your first choice rather than doing it on Ubabuga. For this video, I'll be using Ubabuga as it provides the most well-rounded functionalities with support on most operating systems and available for NVIDIA, AMD, and Apple M series. You can also add Silly Tarvern as the front end if you want, and follow these installation steps and you're good to go. Next, you can start browsing all the free and open source models on Hugging Face and download what you want to use using Ubabuga's built-in downloader by copy and pasting the last two URL slugs. But if you don't have any models in mind, here's a list of models I recommend along with their best usage. And beside their model names, it usually has their own version and a number followed by a B, which means how many billion parameters the model has. And it often acts as an indicator for you if you can run it on your GPU or not. But if it starts doing maths on its name or it says MOE, it means that it's a mixture of experts model, which I explained in my previous video, you can check it out. For a better approximation on how much VRAM you need for each model, you can also refer to these hugging face spaces. Sometimes you would see some other funny looking letters on their names too, like GGUF, AWQ, Safe Tensors, EXL2, GPTQ, but they are all kind of meaningless until you start running your first model and encounters. Runtime error, CUDA out of memory? Well, Safe Tensors is technically unrelated to this, since it's just a secure file format that prevents people from adding says things to your PC when you load up a model from an unknown source, but others are different model formats that potentially let you run them when you typically can't because of their large parameters count, and these formats achieve this by either shrinking down their precision or quantizing them, which is essentially reducing the number of bits used to represent a number that the model uses. This would usually result in lobotomizing these models, but it's not as bad nowadays since the loss isn't as noticeable when used on the better models. For the others, GGUF, a predecessor of GGM is the file format in binary for models that supports different quantization scheme running on CPU and is contained within a single file, which most models are not, by the way. EXL2 is a format used by XLAMA v2, which mixes quantization levels within a model to achieve an average bitrate between 2 and 8 bits per weight. It is the fastest optimization, but only available on NVIDIA GPUs. AWQ is a quantization method that sets smaller weights to zero and round the rest to the nearest quantization threshold to reduce reduce the model size. GPTQ is a layer-wise quantization algorithm which aims to minimize the error at the output so it wouldn't blindly lobotomize itself. However, GPTQ and bits and bytes, which I have not mentioned, is not as practical for inference now since AWQ, EXL2, and GGUF are just generally better. Apart from .safe tensors and 
GUF formats, these quantization methods are all making models smaller after training, which only potentially lets you run them, because we still need to take into account of context length as it would also eat up your memory. And not being able to provide a decent amount of context length would make the model kind of useless since the model often needs context to solve your questions. For clarification, context length is everything which can be instructions, input prompts, and conversation history. And the longer the context length a model has, the more information the AI can use to process your prompt with, like summarizing a paper or keeping track of what it generated in a previous conversation. AI models don't save what you say to it, so instead, you will need to provide history or data for it to use. For the precise technical details, 8,000 tokens context length is usually around 4.5 GB VRAM, but some models like Mixtro and DeepSeek can get VRAM usage even smaller because they have GQA implemented, which is around 1.5 GB for 8,000 tokens. So does that mean it is even more doomed for typical 12 GB VRAM consumers to run local LLMs? Well, not quite. There's something called CPU offloading, which lets you offload models onto CPU and system RAM. It is a feature from Llama C++, the same people that made GGUF, so the model has to be in GGUF format to do this. But even a 12 GB VRAM can run Mixtro AX7B, which is like 45 billion parameters in total, by putting 10 GB of the model in the VRAM with 2 GB for context and the rest handled by CPU and system RAM. While the trade-off is of course the speed and using the quantized model, you would still get some pretty top-tier results for running locally for free. And if you do want to run it faster other than EXL2, there are other hardware acceleration framework like VLM inference engine that is great for server-side where it handles parallel requests very well and increases model speed by 24 times compared to hugging face. And NVIDIA is also offering Tensor RT LLMs that you can use for some popular models to increase inference by four times with your RTX GPU. They also recently released an app called Chat with RTX, which is a local UI that can connect a model to your local documents and other data so you can ask it to scan your documents without the need to upload it anywhere. Super good for privacy if that's what you're looking for. It can also watch a YouTube video and answer questions about the content of the video. So if you're too lazy to watch my videos or just need to revisit a few key points I've made, Chat with RTX can answer it easily for you. But if speed is not what you're looking for and you want the AI to do something more specific, like becoming a chatbot that teaches you how to code or becoming a tech support for grandparents, this is where fine tuning comes in. QLoRa is the current best way to fine tune a model as it doesn't need to train the whole billion parameters model and instead only a fraction of them. Besides, no one really fine tunes the entire model as it is pretty inefficient and you probably need to spend a quarter of a million just to train it for like a month. But before you start fine tuning it, remember the golden rule in AI, garbage in, garbage out. If the training data is badly organized, the result would be trash. The model that you choose to fine tune has to be a good fit for what you want it to do too. The data set for fine tuning usually needs to follow the original data set's format that was used to train the model you are fine tuning on. There are currently a lot of different formats and because the data formatting is how instruction, Q&A, and dialogue AI models are made, so to reproduce something of similar format, it's necessary to choose one correctly. There are other fine tuning techniques which have less capabilities than QLoRa, however, they mostly serve a different purpose too, like get it to generate answers that satisfy some moral guardrails, or responses that are more preferred by humans. And yeah, these are roughly everything about running local LLMs and AI chatbots. There are also other extensions that you can use like RAG to hook up LLM with a database through Llama Index, so you can do things like asking a model about some local files just like it was demoed in chat with RTX and even in a bigger scale, or replacing GitHub Copilot with continue.dev using your local models which would save you some more bugs, running local LLMs may just be the peak of money saving in this age of AI without giving up performance. So maybe this is where you start your min-maxing journey in AI and run local models that will save you extra 20 bucks during this hiring freeze. But if you are looking for more GPUs to run local models faster, Nvidia actually sent me an RTX 4080 Super to give away to you guys. And look at this bad boy. I'll probably not open this box so whoever gets this can still enjoy the thrill of fully unboxing it. To join the giveaway, you just need to attend at least one virtual GTC session and show proof of you attending it, which is really straightforward. I'll link the participation form down in the description so you can join once GTC starts. For the proof, I just need you to take a selfie while watching any of the live virtual GTC sessions. And if you don't want to show your face, you can just show a thumbs up with GTC on your monitor or do something unique that does 
does not look like it's generated by AI. And also very important, you have to use my link down in the description to sign up for the free virtual GTC session. This time, they also have the original authors of Transformers, which is from the paper Attention is All You Need, hosted a panel on March 20th, which is going to be one of the highlights. And I highly recommend you to attend. So you can watch it live online. So definitely add it to your schedule and participate the giveaway at the same time. Shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Maurice, Miguel Lim, Deegan, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.